Are Alabama's cornerbacks going to be as good as we think? You are Locked On Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody. Welcome back into Locked On Bama. Luke Robinson from the AHSA Radio Network. That's me. Bama Online's Jimmy Stein. That's him. And today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. We appreciate Game Time oh so much. They're the best. I'll tell you about them in a minute. And thank you for all you everydayers making us your first, second, or third listen. And you newbies, you're also welcome. You got a big group hug. Uh, Jimmy, we're going to talk about cornerbacks today. We're going to talk about a new 2027 commitment. And we're going to talk about just your overall thoughts from practice because you got to go to the second practice just like you got to go to the first practice. What did you see today that you didn't necessarily see yesterday? I can tell you one thing you didn't see either day. That's a certain transfer from Texas A&M. Uh, that's right. Um, it was uh, LT Overton. Uh, he missed today. Um, he missed yesterday. And we asked uh, Kane Womack, Alabama's defensive coordinator, uh, hey, uh, we don't seem to have LT Overton out here. Uh, came – Excuse me, I couldn't make it to my mute there. Still, still uh, recovering from last week's illness. Um, so, Kane Womack says LT Overton, like myself, uh, was, <laughs> is a little uh, burdened with illness. So, LT has not been out there the first two days because he is sick. Uh, but he did say that he would be expected back very shortly. So, uh, we'll see. We, I did watch his, pra- his group practice again today. Uh, the um, bandit group uh, features Jamarian Latham, Keon Keeley, and uh, Jordan Renaud. Those are the three out there with uh, with LT absent. Boy, you really caught me off guard taking a big gulp there, buddy. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> well, I, did, I didn't expect you to go water break. Right, so yeah. um, regardless, <laughs> um, okay, so, yeah, dealing with an illness, uh, nothing to really uh, – glean from that right except you, you just hate to start out that way right i mean right it, i don't think it means anything i don't think it means anything horrible he's a good player all these other things you just hate for it to, it's like calling in sick on your first day at work i mean <laughs> yeah okay maybe you got covid and it, it we you can't help it but it just right. it sucks and we don't know um, what his uh illness is uh Kim Womack just said he was ill. And, and again, uh, LT, by the way, would be probably, if he was out there, the second team bandit. That's where he ended the spring. Again, Jamarian Latham's the starter out there at that spot. And once again, I, I saw that group practice up close today. And, boy, Keon Keeley size. <laughs> he's an impressive guy. But, you know, who, who's impressive is the starter, Jamarian Latham. Uh, he's the type of player that fans just underappreciate. And it's you know why? It's because we've seen him play, and he's not – awesome you know we've seen him play and he's not awesome he's not going to be a first round pick he's probably not going to be first team all sec to be honest but you know what jamarian latham is he's good they they depend on him they trust him he's getting better he's a leader he knows his stuff he leads the group he's physical uh this will be his his fourth or, or fifth year playing in games uh boy just a positive uh, uh, asset to the team, but you know, fans, fans, mostly fans are like, Hey, if you're not Will Anderson, you know, they want to move on to the next guy. Speaking of Will Anderson, and and this is maybe you may think it's unrelated, but I saw where somebody for ESPN came out with their list of best 25 players in the, you know, the 21st century. And it only had two Bama guys on there, Devonte Smith and Will Anderson. And one of the running backs, was not Derrick Henry. One of the running backs was Jonathan Taylor. There was no Adrian Peterson that I saw. I was like, what in the free world is happening here? Um, <laughs> Can't explain. Can't explain that. But uh, I'm explaining my own stuff. Yeah. I just, you know, I just thought that was strange. Since you brought up Will Anderson, it made me think of that. Yeah. Um, but another thing you brought up on your notes mm-hmm. from today was the tight end room. Um, you talked about C.J. Dupree, yeah, sure. obviously, uh, Cuevas, who was transferred over, um, some of the Jay Lindsay, all those guys, right? And 
the thing that stood out to me was like, God, we got a bunch of pretty good tight ends. Yeah. I'm so, it's sort of the same. It's like we have a tight end room full of the tight end version of Jamari and Latham. Like <laughs> we don't think any of them are going to be first team anything, but they can all play. It feels like now some of them we hadn't seen actually in action, but it just feels like meaning I've seen some of these guys in other events, uh, maybe in high school. And, and obviously you've seen them at practice. So it, Feels like they're they're not, not all the same dude. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. Jay Lindsay is the same as CJ Dupree. I mean, uh, I would say Lindsay's probably a better blocker, Dupree a better receiver, all those things, right? But I don't know that any of them are excellent at anything, right? Uh, um, I think that's fair. Uh, but here's the deal: I, I think at tight end, ideally, I mean, this is what ideally you want. You want Brock Bowers. You want Rob yeah. Gronkowski or Travis Kelsey or George Kittle. That's what you ideally want. And Alabama, let's be honest, like you just pointed out, Alabama doesn't have one of those. There's not an All-American candidate probably in the bunch, to be honest, of six tight ends on scholarship. So here's the second best situation. Do you have parts that you can mix and match based on down and distance and situation to where you're always putting a quality player on the field? And that's where Alabama's in good shape. Hey, you know, you you want that position, you want that edge blocked. You, you can put CJ Dupree and Robbie Oost out there, and it's gonna get blocked pretty well. Th those guys are above average SEC tight ends as blockers. Okay. But then you're like, well, we're gonna have to throw it to the tight end at some point. You can't be that predictable. You gotta throw it to the tight end. Josh Cuevas, currently Alabama's, I guess you'd say he's his third tight end. Josh Cuevas is gonna prove to be, you guys watch an above average SEC receiver at the tight end position. So you've got a guy that can catch the ball in Cuevas. You've got guys that can block in Dupree and Oost. And then it, it's there's some depth there because Danny Lewis is the fourth tight end, is a guy that can do a little bit of both. He can block. He can catch the ball. And then you're redshirting Jay Lindsey. I watched Jay Lindsey a few snaps today. I try not to spend too much time on true freshmen that I don't think would be guys in – position to play significant roles, but, uh, but Jay Lindsay, uh, certainly passes the looks test and, uh, in the blocking drills, I think he's, he's pretty impressive. He's a thick kid. He's going to be a monster after about two years in Alabama's weight program. I'm very high on Jay Lindsay, uh, becoming CJ Dupree, becoming Robbie Oost. I think that's what Jay Lindsay will be over time. But, uh, Josh Cuevas is a guy you want to throw the ball to the tight end. Cuevas is your guy. Uh, saw the quarterbacks throwing the balls to the tight end today, and it doesn't take a rocket scientist to pick Cuevas out of that group. I mean, he just runs the cleanest routes with the most twitch, the most burst, and uh, he's got very good hands. I did my things backwards there. I was supposed to do the, the first thing second and the second thing first. As long as we're talking about game time, I'm on board. There you go, Jimmy. That's how you segue and save your co-host because I'm talking about game time. And I'm telling, you, I'm telling you all the truth. I'm not teasing. Yesterday, yesterday, I bought my tickets to the Alabama-Wisconsin on game time. You know why? Because it's the best place to buy tickets. I got to see where we're going to sit. And my other friends who were going with me are like, oh, my God, we can see where we're going to sit. This looks awesome. And, the, and they were like, hey, I saw read somewhere that the tickets for Alabama-Wisconsin – are like the 19th or 20th most expensive tickets of any game in the country this upcoming year. And I said, well, that's why I'm using game time, yo, and saving us a boatload of money. And that's what I did. Because I, I have the game time app, and I've used it for NFL, Major League Baseball, used it for a World Series game, used it for college baseball, college basketball, used it for all types of stuff. I mean, everything. And, of course, I've used it for college football, and you can too. Go download the game time app and use code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE for $20 off your first purchase. That's code Locked On College. The Game Time app, anywhere you get your apps and things, is you want to get that Game Time app and use code Locked On College. You will save some cash and you will thank me later in the comments. All right. So, Jimmy, I uh, want to remind everybody to go check out the uh, Locked On Sports Today stream because if you're just watching Fox Sports or ESPN, they're just yelling at you all day and you don't want to listen to that. I don't want to listen to that. So, go check out Locked On Sports Today. And um, you will enjoy it. You can get on YouTube or on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team, or a day.
always. Um, so, Jimmy, let's talk a little cornerbacks here. Um, the coaches were specifically asked about the cornerbacks. I know Mo Linguist talked about them. I know Kane Womick talked about them. And um, Fabian Brown is really standing out. I think he's right now listed as a starter with Damani Jackson. Now, second day in practice, uh, let's pump the brakes on everything. But still, it's not nothing. And then he also brought up, of course, uh, Xavier Mincy, Jalen Mbakwe, uh, and the transfer from uh, Wake Forest, who he's talked about now. Day Day. Yeah. His name and is Day I'm, Day. I'm a little he shocked. Learn something every day. And, and uh, Deshaun Jones' nickname is Day Day. That's one of the things I wrote down, huh? Well, so you learn something learn almost something every day day. day. <laughs> um, today Day. <laughs> that was what we learned today day. I wish today would have been A Day to see Day Day. day. That would have been <laughs> um, anyway, so they talked him up pretty good too. By the way, I think they're pretty high on him. They they are, but now I did notice this, and and again, maybe this is all of us starving to uh, suck out whatever we can from these comments. When a lot of times coaches are just probably like, "Hey, I'm telling you some stuff that is pretty innocuous, and you'll run with it." But I noticed when they were talking about cornerbacks. Day Day was the last one discussed, and he, and he sort of mentioned him the way I mentioned him just a minute ago, and almost like, a, yeah, that transfer from Wake Forest, he's pretty good. We're glad to have him. I don't think he meant it as a slight, but I'm saying if you wanted to read it that way, I get it. Uh, and I, it doesn't go unnoticed that you got Damani Jackson as a starter and then you got a true freshman as a starter. It doesn't go unnoticed to me. And again, I'm fine with that because we believe you and I have been hyping these three freshman cornerbacks up like nobody's business, Mincy, Brown, and Mbakwe. We have been saying, hey, it wouldn't shock us if you had two of them starting eventually. You know, it wouldn't shock us this year if you had two of them starting eventually. But at the same time, uh, I just found it interesting. Is there anything to read from that, or do you do you really feel like they are out? Well, I think it's an open competition for right now. I think Damani has one spot pretty much on lockdown. I, I think we're I think we're to the point where we'd be pretty stunned if Damani Jackson's not starting a cornerback against Western Kentucky. I think the other spot is open. I think Xavier Brown has it for now, and I think Jalen Mbakwe is making a run at him per Kane Womack, who who spoke to us today and. And y'all can check out those interviews on BOL. Me and Charlie Potter got our Steven Spielberg work in today, uh, videoing coaches at the press conference. Um, but Kane Womack said, um, you know, that Jalen Abakwe has made great strides. He's making a run at Zabian. He did mention Zay Mincy as, as being uh, impressive. And he mentioned Day Day, Deshaun Jones as a guy that, that he's been impressed with. He also specifically mentioned that even though it's only been eight weeks, Deshaun Jones has put on considerable, impressive muscle weight, muscle size since he's been at Alabama. And his eight weeks, he's been really impressed by how quickly and how hard Deshaun has worked to add that uh, weight that they apparently felt was a good idea for him. Hold uh, on. Deshaun Jones has been at Alabama eight weeks now? Eight weeks. Yeah, he's been here eight weeks. You know, when I'm in the summer and it's hot every day and you're getting – bitten by mosquitoes and you're wishing for football, it feels like the days just don't go by at all. That, he got here June 1st. That feels like a quick eight weeks, man. Sure does. Yeah, he got here June 1st, and now it's August 1st. So okay. it's eight, eight plus weeks. Fair enough. So, uh, yeah, Kane Womack himself said eight, eight weeks. But here, here's another interesting thing that uh, Charlie and I picked up today at practice. Um, how about this? And uh, Charlie's interviewer or sat down and taped uh, Mo Linguist, the cornerback coach. Uh, Mo Linguist uh, – let on that, look, Alabama's probably going to play a rotation of players at corner. And that's a gigantic difference over the last staff. It's stunning. It was kind of an earthquake. Jumped out right at me big time. Like, you got to be kidding. That. And only because Alabama hasn't done that in years. Nick Saban played his starting defensive backs and rarely substituted. Now, he put in packages, you know, base, nickel, dime. But he didn't substitute in and out with the players. He didn't give the starters a breather. He didn't rotate because he liked two guys. He played his starter until the game was over at defensive back. And uh, Mo Linguist led on today that maybe the plan at Alabama uh, for this fall is a rotation of players at cornerback. So we may see Day Day. We may see Zay Mincy. We may see Ibakwe, Hurley. Uh, we may see them all. all. Uh, and and that, that's super interesting. I, it certainly caught me by surprise. Uh, it's just one of those things, having a new staff, 
that you almost have to see the games before you really know how this is going to play out. Day Day, Zay Zay, and Mbakwe all back there at the same time. There you go. That's I love why that. you have to rotate. That's why you have to rotate right there. That's the reason. <laughs> That's, that's the only reason. Well, Coach, Day Day's playing so well, I know, but it's Zay Zay's turn. I can, yeah, I can resist playing Zay Zay, Day Day, and Mbakwe if I can. If the rules allow. I'm doing yeah, it. I mean, yeah. I'm not even sure. Yeah, legally, we may not be able to do that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's, that's, that's something. Uh, but I'll tell you something, Jimmy. We got us up another 2027 commitment that we're going to talk about next. And you want to talk about interesting nicknames. This cat's got him one. But I'm going to tell you about eBay Motors first and foremost before I get into our 2027 commitment. And uh, we love eBay Motors over here. It's the absolute best. They uh, they, they just are, are fantastic, and you need to go check them out. And I'll tell you something, passion, drive, and patience, the formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle to level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and much more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time of your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber. You're not burning cash with all the parts you need at the price you want it's easy to make your car the mvp and bring home huge wins keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com eligible items only exclusions do apply and ebay guaranteed fit only available to u.s customers if you remember some time ago jimmy alabama had a pretty well-known player who was famously who famously said his name to, I think, a police officer at one time was Brandon Chicken. It wasn't, in fact, Brandon Chicken. <laughs> that would be the worst name ever. But Alabama's new commitment for 2027, his nickname is Chicken. It is so funny that you bring this up because we uh, discussed this uh, in the uh, media room between, <laughs> between practice and the interviews. This literally came up in the media room with the writers. So it's funny that Luke didn't know that and brings us up uh, here that uh, Jaborius Gare, yeah, no, that Jaborius Gare, Fred Viger, his nickname is uh, Chicken. That is uh, apparently uh, correct, and which is cool. It's half, you know why? it's half the coolest nickname. I'm not, I don't know why. I don't know why. I mean, but what what could be the positive behind it? Yeah, chicken doesn't sound like something you'd want to be because there's a, a negative kind of day. Ah, oh, you're chicken, you know, you're you're not brave or whatever. But uh, who knows? I, I just know this: the dude's a player. I mean, you're not offering twenty. You're not offering twenty twenty seven players unless you've uh, a you've worked with them, right? I mean, this is a kid that they've seen in camp this summer. Kane Womack, coach of Mobile, he knows those Mobile area kids really well. And then of course there's the ninth grade tape of him at Viger. Viger plays. Even though they're not a 7A or 6A school, they play a tough schedule against good athletes. Gary was a teammate last year of Alabama commitment, Micah Debos. And uh, Debos is transferring to Theodore, by the way. But but uh, Gary is continuing at Viger. Um, he's a wolf, 6'2", 200. I think this is a kid, uh, when we say wolf, this is a kid I think that's going to stick at wolf. We talked about Barack Willis earlier this week, the other 27 kid that committed to Alabama. He's probably going to grow into a defensive lineman. This is a 230 pound ninth grader. He's he's going to be very very big. But uh, Garer uh, is 200 today. He's got two and a half years to grow before he goes to college. Just a guess, looking at his frame, he's probably a 220 225 pound guy by the time he gets to Alabama. And I think he'll be a wolf. I think he'll be similar to the wolves that are committed as part of the 25 class. Dawson Merritt, uh, the Hill kid, Justin Hill from uh, from Ohio. I think J Jaborius Garer will be a similar prospect to Dawson Merritt and, uh, and Justin Hill. I, mean, I think he could be in their category uh, by the time two and a half years rolls around. Big Alabama fan, just like Willis. The reason they got these guys is they worked them as priority players, and these kids are full gumps. Uh, Garer and, and Barack Willis both are gump-type prospects. They love Alabama, and, uh, and they got an Alabama opportunity that they earned uh, both in camp and by their tape. Uh, man, when you're a freshman – playing high school football and you're as productive as those two on the field. I mean, Brock Willis had like 90 tackles and 10 sacks 
as a ninth grader. That's, that's nuts. Yeah. That that's you know those numbers sound like the kind of thing Caleb Holt was doing basketball wise. By the yeah, way, Caleb Holt is transferring out of the state of Alabama. He's going to Georgia, which I I don't like because I want him here, but I'm and I don't. Um, and I don't related. Alabama yeah. doesn't allow high school players to make NIL money while they're in high school. Georgia does. Yep, I, and I don't blame him. I mean, I, again, I just wish you were here for my own selfish purposes. But, um, you know, another interesting recruiting tidbit. So yesterday we talked about how Alabama offered Eric Smith, who is the twin brother of Derek Smith, who just flipped from Alabama to Auburn. And Eric Smith, meanwhile, is just not uh, in the same league as Derek as a player, apparently, at least the ratings don't. Uh, show that he's only rated as a three star by one service. And we said yesterday, is this a legitimate offer? Is this an offer to entice Derek or is this an offer to perhaps entice Auburn to make force them to offer Eric? The answer may be all of the above. Cause guess what happened? That <laughs> Auburn offered Eric Smith. And wouldn't it be something, you know, if uh, Eric ends up being as good or better than his much more highly hyped older brother, I've just seen that story happen a handful of times in my football. Well, Sean uh, Jennings and Anthony Jennings. Great, great example. I mean, well, Anthony, yeah. Anthony, Anthony was more highly recruited, but. It, Sean Jennings ended up being the dude. I mean, yeah. Sean Jennings could play. Sean Jennings yeah. could play. I'll tell you, a good one, too, is the, that Kim Dietschy brother ended up being a good yeah. player. I mean, Robert yeah, Kim Dietschy was like a six-star, and people assumed his brother was some sort of a throw-in, but that brother was a dang good player. Yeah. yeah. So we see it all the time, but wouldn't that be funny? But I, I don't I don't think we'll, – we'll see. Alabama's going to continue to recruit those kids. I think there's a difference that I want people to to realize, and Andrew Bone has talked about this at BOL, by the way. Uh, so this is, this is coming from Bone. Uh, I don't know that Alabama's going to continue to recruit Antonio Coleman. That ship may have sailed. I think that fourth – commitment the second time he's flipped from Alabama to Auburn. I think Alabama may have stuck a pin in that one, but uh, Alabama will continue to recruit Derek Smith hard. Uh, they're going to try. That doesn't mean they'll be successful, uh, but they're going to try to uh, to recruit Derek Smith back into the fold that may or may not include his uh, twin brother, Eric. Just interesting. I mean, look, his twin brother is 6'6", six, six, and he's a pretty good-looking athlete. I mean, you know, I can think of worse brothers to take. I mean, look, I'm now in hindsight, you wonder if Alabama wishes they hadn't pursued Keenan Allen's brother a little more to transfer from Buffalo at the right. time. Cause you look at what Keenan Allen's done in the NFL, which is just have this amazing career. I mean, look, that's, that's water over the dam or over the bridge or through the tunnel or whatever it is. So it doesn't matter. But a couple you know, of interesting things about that. Cause it's been bought up a lot, by the way, I just like to throw this in every time. Cause I think it's interesting. Keenan Allen, uh, was supposed to go to Alabama, didn't instead chose Cal uh, because Cal was giving an opportunity to his brother that that Alabama didn't. But the uh, the, the coach that recruited him to Cal, future Alabama coach Tosh Lupoy, Tosh yes, Lupoy right. is who signed Keenan Allen to go to Cal. But let's remember one thing about his brother. I think his name is Derek Maynard. Uh, Maynard ended up a starting quarterback at Cal. Yeah, I mean he was a starting quarterback. And for those who say, oh, Alabama should have taken him. He never would have been the starting quarterback at Alabama, no. never. But he started at Cal. So I don't think – I know Alabama fans still talk about, oh, Keenan Allen, the one that got away. I don't think Keenan has any regrets because his brother – he not only got to play with his brother, his brother got to be the starting quarterback. So I don't think the Allen family is all upset about that. No, I mean, he would have had some championship rings, and he probably would have – uh, maybe could have elevated his own brand a little more, but at the same time, I mean, he's been in the NFL a long time, so I'm not sure, sure. Alabama could have done anything more for him. For sure, than what might have played did. another position too, if I remember right. Alabama sort of liked him as a safety. I don't know if he was open to playing either spot. He ended up obviously playing wide receiver at Cal and in the NFL, but Alabama liked Keenan Allen on defense. I bet you he would have been an awesome safety though. Oh sure, sure. I mean, there's there's no doubt about it. Like Mark Barron probably would have been an awesome anything, you know. I talked about this today, and not because um, I've seen anything that may, you know, but just one of these thoughts that's in my head. I wonder what Kendrick Law would look like at safety, you know, because I just happened to see Kendrick Law. Kendrick Law? Yeah. 5'10, yeah. 218. I mean, he's ripped to shreds. He's ripped. He, okay. You say 5'10, and maybe he isn't. I have, maybe I haven't stood next to him. It doesn't feel like he's 5'10. 
He probably is. I mean, now it's harder. You know, I'm a shorter guy. Did you his helmet and cleats? I saw him. I saw him up close today. I he's okay. not, he's not short. He's okay. not short. But man, that dude is just ripped up. And if he's he, in, other, in other words, my my point that I was making, and it comes from seeing Kendrick Law up close today, was like. You know, if you just said, what position does he play? And I'm pretty good at that. I mean, I'm not bad a thousand, but I'm pretty good at that. I mean, just like what position does he play? I would have told you safety. Sure. And if I, if, and if you're like, nope, wrong, I would have gone running back. Yeah. The fact that he's a receiver would have been sort of my Fair. third choice, uh, you Fair. know, just looking at him, you know. Uh, but, but I would have said corner versus safety. That's but, me, even though he's ripped up. But when he's just standing there, he's not running a four three forty. See, I knew that. I'd go, oh, maybe he should be playing wide receiver. He did, if you watch the videos from practice today, he did have an amazing over the shoulder catch. Yeah, dude's got some skill. I mean, I think he's a, a great candidate to to have a big blow up year. Let's hope so. I mean, we've talked about him in the countdown. We got to get back into your countdown. We still got what four dudes left? Maybe five. Right. What's well, a good time to go uh, for practice for folks that don't know? Of course, we're recording this on a Thursday. The team is not practicing uh, Friday, uh, so that there won't be a practice Friday, and I don't believe there's going to be a practice Sunday either. Uh, so just for for people to know, when they're like, "Where's my practice report?" Uh, they practice Wednesday, practice Thursday, no practice on Friday. All right, we will uh, be back maybe tomorrow. We'll see. Until then, roll tight, everybody. Roll tight.